Welcome to day 530 of our Web3 journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here, my twin brother, Brian. And remember, these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They're an investor in DSOFI, which is a Web3 mobile app built on the DSO blockchain. So, Brian, what the heck is going on with Bitcoin? Yeah, uh, it's hit the lowest point it's seen since June. We're now in September. So three months ago, we were in the $17,500 area. Yesterday and this morning, it's fallen significantly to 18750 or so. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if it's going to touch where we saw back in June or not. Uh, most of this drop has, is coming because of a drop in global stock markets, and Bitcoin's been really tied to the global markets as of late, uh, but also the strengthening U.S. dollar. Uh, the dollar has surged over the over the last two weeks or so. Uh, compared to the euro, it's it's about it's about uh, ninety eight cents ninety eight euro cents per dollar now, which is crazy. Uh, or I'm sorry, ninety eight cents per euro, which is nuts. Uh, but it's just the treasury. Uh, the U.S. Treasury continues to show that they're going to try to fight inflation by raising interest rates. And when you raise interest rates, you're going to have riskier assets deflate a little bit. And that's what we see happening here. Uh, the entire value of the crypto market has dropped below $1 trillion. Um, Bitcoin itself is down 60% from the high of $68,990 it saw back in November. So lots going on. I don't, I don't know if we're going to see new lows, new recent lows. I think that June's number could act as a strong support. But we'll have to see. It really depends on what the global markets do. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think, you know, I think we're still in this roller coaster for Bitcoin and the crypto markets in general. I think I think the next couple months are gonna be very telling. I think I think we're gonna see I think we're gonna see a it's we're gonna hit a hit a floor at some point, but I just don't know what that floor is. Hopefully it's at like the 17 16 to 17 thousand area where it dropped to before maybe we get a double bottom and it bounces from there otherwise if it falls through that i mean there's no telling how low this could go it could go all the way down to ten thousand or so i think so you know keep your fingers crossed uh at least if you're if you're long bitcoin and hopefully hopefully we get out of this in okay shape but you know nobody knows for sure it's just something we got to wait and see on Something else to keep an eye on is the uh, Ethereum merge, which is supposed to take place probably sometime next week. Uh, and if that goes well, it might be a positive for the crypto markets. If it doesn't go well, then look out below. And inflation as well. We're going to get the uh, inflation data sometime soon, right, Brian? I think it's... Yeah, we should be getting it. I believe it'll be early next week. So that, that should be big. If inflation's still down, if it's not going up anymore like it wasn't last month, uh, in the U.S., I think that would be a great sign. I think it would be a good sign that the Fed is on way to curtailing inflation, or they perhaps they have curtailed inflation. But that that number should give us some insight, I think. So so moving on uh, to the DSO blockchain, Natter yesterday made a really really interesting, really really cool post. He he posted a photo of him, uh, Piotr, who's Patern on. DSO and Dylan Jagger Lee. And he said, just set up a co new co-working space in LA. Not your keys, not your office. <laughs> and it's a really cool picture. He's just holding up the key to the office and uh, Piotr and Dylan are in the background uh, giving the peace sign. Um, but yeah, their office looks like a disaster. Um, it's very messy, but I think that's just because they're still in the process of hooking their computers up. But I'm glad to see them working together. I'm glad to see them having a space together. I think that's really important when working on a project like this, rather than just doing everything remotely. I think working together, some of the core people on the team being together, working together, being a quickly bounce ideas of each other, show each other stuff they're working on. I think that's important. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I hope this is a sign that some big things are coming in the next couple of weeks. I know we're all holding our breath and hoping that something big is going to come. And, and I, I think... We're going to start to slowly see see some of what they've been working on come to fruition. Yep, hopefully. Uh, so daily active users seem to be up. 
But is that just an illusion or are they really up? So we're kind of trying to figure this out. Uh, yesterday, it's Aditya made a post saying that daily active users are increasing above 2.5K, over 2,500. He's, and, and he also went in to kind of explain where he's at on DSO. He said that he has no plans of building anything new right now, but he will be back to build once we hit 5,000 to 10,000 daily active users. On a side note, he also said he's starting a Twitter Spaces event once his exams and school are over with, and that event's going to take place with Mitreshka. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. I think that'll be a really interesting event. But going, getting back to daily active users, this morning, Philippe, Philippe uh, Tahiti pointed out that an account called IBU, and the letter's IBU, I assume it means IBU, has created 147,800 and 72 fake accounts since February 1st. And this is concerning, and it's been concerning. We touched on it a while back. Uh, and he noted that out of the 2,120 daily active users over the last 24 hours, I know that's below the 2,500 that it's a deep to talk about, but this is early morning. So out of that 2,120, 524 of them only seem to be legit. The rest seem to be fake accounts with only one transaction. And one transaction is a good indicator that an account is a bot or an account that has just been set up just to sit there. And this IBU account seems to be a name squatter, at least according to ECOU Echo. Uh, he reported that the name seems to be squatting on usernames, buying a bunch of usernames, 100, over 100,000, 40,000 usernames, with the intent to sell for a profit, and he and he noted that months ago we kind of noticed that they were, they bought up all the two, the, all the three, four, and five letter usernames. Uh, so I don't know. Are daily active users an illusion? Can this number really be trusted? Maybe we need a better mechanism for determining daily active users, such as two transactions, in order to count as active. I don't know. What do you think, Brian? Yeah, I mean, looking at 524, if that's the number of daily active users, that's that's really low. Uh, but, I mean, it could be. Watching engagement over the last few weeks, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that was an accurate number right now. Things are really slow on the blockchain. Uh, I know a lot of people are just probably waiting it out and seeing what happens here. And I, I don't know what you think about somebody buying up all the three, four, and five-letter domain names. I think it's a little bit crazy. It, it it kind of, it's going to be kind of an impediment on for onboarding because people that wanted specific uh, initials for companies or just certain pronounceable words might not be able to get them now because they're being kind of uh, hoarded by one individual, it appears. Yeah, they'd have to buy them. But like, like I don't know, like one transaction could be a daily active user. I know it's, it's a good indication that it's not, but... Say somebody just logs into their account and likes a post or makes a post or diamonds a post. That's going to be that one transaction. So, but it sure. could a, would a transaction be logging in though? I don't believe it is. That's not. I don't think that's a trans. I think transactions are things that cost DSO, right? Okay. Yeah, I guess that makes so sense. So I, I think probably more than the five hundred twenty-four number are probably real users, not just fake users, but. Maybe, maybe somebody with more information can kind of chime in on this. Maybe Natter can chime in. Wait and see. Andrew made a post. Andrew Van Duenbode. Yeah, so Andrew Van Duenbode replied, made a, wrote an article about uh, the friction problem. Yesterday, of course, we spoke a lot about the friction problem on DSO and, and getting new users signed up. And how they need to figure out a way to get around this. And Andrew wrote an article, he titled it Reducing Onboarding Friction for Non-Crypto Users, and he posted this on Zirkles. And it was really well thought out, and he has a pretty good idea. So I, I just want to kind of go over what his idea is, because I do think it's a possibility. Of course, the problem that the core team had, the DSO Foundation had when they were originally were giving away a small amount of DSO to all new users is that bots took advantage of it and cashed that DSO out uh, and ran off with a lot of free money. But what if you had this like 
like sort of in between stage of an account where you sign up, you get this free money. Maybe it's like three, five cents, something like that. But you can't do a lot of the transactions that would allow for you to offboard that money, whether it's sending diamonds or sending sending uh, DSO to other users, or maybe it's uh, buying creator coins or sending creator coins or transferring NFTs, buying NFTs, selling NFTs. Maybe you won't be able to do some of that. Uh, selling NFTs, maybe that's not a good example. But then you can't, you're not going to get bots creating accounts to just accumulate this free five cents of DSO and then run off with it because they're not going to be able to run off with it. And you won't be able to catch that DSO out until you're verified. And maybe there can be some verification process, whether it's through associations, whether certain nodes can verify if they have permission to do so. And then they'd be able to cash out any DSO. So this would put this like impediment in between the bots and actual users where there's not really a purpose of creating a bot account unless you're really going to try and fool people into thinking you're real and it's not worth it for five cents. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. Maybe like certain accounts could be deemed like verifier accounts. And if that account follows one of these new accounts, then that account gets approved. And certain individuals from within the core team or within the community could volunteer to be those accounts. I don't know. I think that's an interesting idea. Thanks for yeah, that. Yeah, I just want to thank Andrew for, for writing out this article. And you'll see it in the link uh, in this video, below this video, as well as on the DSO post we make. Uh, it's definitely worth a read. Yeah, and check out Zirkles if you haven't already. So Ash Diso announced the winners of the seven-day social media challenge. Uh, remember, this was a challenge during Misha Da Vinci's event that was held, I think it was last week or the week before. I guess it was last week of his seven days. But uh, it was a great event, and a lot of new users signed up to Diso because of it. And there's some winners. Uh, those winners are X Ortho, Sarah J. Kennedy, Smart Girl Credit, Glimmer of Hope, and Flawless. All five of these winners win $100 in DSO. So congrats, and welcome to all the new users who signed up from uh, Misha's event. Uh, it's great to have you on board. Thanks for participating. Um, and I encourage all users on DSO to go engage with these people. Go uh, welcome them aboard. Go make sure they don't have any questions. And if they do, help them out, because I think that's what's going to help with the retention. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so what's going on with Mainnet 2022 in New York City? Yeah, so last week we talked about this. We said that DSO is planning to be at Nassari's Mainnet 2022 in NYC and that Natter was going to be giving a talk. He's one of the speakers there. Uh, so DSO is going to be having a booth at this event, actually. And they're actually inviting the DSO community to attend, check out their booth, visit stop by, maybe talk to some people who are there that are wondering about DSO and want to see some prime examples of users on DSO. Uh, so DSO also has $300 discount codes for community members. If you want to purchase tickets, you can do so via the link above this video or below it. It's just mainnet.events forward slash question mark promo equals DSO 300. And you can also just use discount code DSO 300. You get this discount. Uh, Brian and I probably won't be making it, it's just too soon, but I hope I hope you see a lot of photos and videos of DSO community members there taking part in the event and visiting DSO's booth. I love, can't wait to hear Natter's, Natter's speech. Yeah, uh, tickets are very pricey. I checked it out, I think they're like $1,600. Uh, so I don't know if we're gonna see a ton of DSO users there, but I think we're going to see a lot of really uh, important crypto people there, and and that's definitely good. Are you trying stuff. to say that DSO users are cheap? No, I, I just don't know if it's worth it for a DSO user to shell out sixteen hundred dollars uh, and fly to New York City just for DSO. Uh, but I mean, it's more than just DSO, Brian. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if there's other things that interest you there, then definitely it's definitely worth checking out. I'm I'm guessing. Yeah. So Big Mike R thirty five made a post reminding everybody that the Licks DAO funding round is closing, and it's closing really soon. It's actually at 1 p.m. Eastern time today, 1 p.m. Eastern time. On DAO DAO, the Licks DAO uh, coin offer is going to end, the fundraising round. So far, they've raised an astounding $6,865 out of their $10,000 goal. Uh, this has actually been one of the more successful DAOs on DAO DAO. 
There hasn't been too many successes yet, but I think this is one that is succeeding quite well. Of course, Lix is created by Clay Oosby, Nathan Wells, CFKY, and their goal is to create a platform for the staking of NFTs. So I'm looking forward to seeing this materialize. I, ho I hope they reach that $10,000 goal. If you haven't contributed yet, maybe you want to consider doing so. Uh, become part of that day and see, see what happens. Great project, great group of people. Uh, I can't wait to see what they do within the NFT space. And talking about NFTs, the top 10 people with the most NFT bids on the DSO blockchain over the last 24 hours are as follows. Garbo, Shady Acres, Hindsight Profit, Rhubarb, Spunk Art, La Big Mac, Nigels, Meta Philosopher, Ides of March, and Dragonstone. Yeah, and, and thanks, thanks to NFTZ for that. And I just want to chime in real fast and say that NFTZ is working on a dark mode. It's coming soon. Uh, just stay tuned. We'll show some uh, clips of it here soon on one of our videos. Uh, but moving on, the top 10 daily gainers in coin value over the last 24 hours on the DSO blockchain, according to Alton Base, are as follows. Cha K, Brave Bank, Strange, Stranger of the Wicked, The Portrait, STNC, Shady Acres, Ben Ersing, JJ Me, Complexity, and Han Art. Uh, congrats to those people. These Those people received the most new buys of their social token or creator coin on Diesel. Yeah, so we kind of replaced the uh, daily diamonds with this, at least for today, just because we want to get some more more people involved in it, I guess. But today's events, thanks to Miss Katie Ann yet again, uh, there's four of them at 11 a.m. Eastern time is Indie Hackers with Wondolinsky on Vibe Hut. If you haven't checked Vibe Hut out, definitely do so. 11 a.m. Eastern time. 1.30 Eastern Time today, Web3 Wednesdays with Caleb and Sean Tron on Entra. Just check out joinentra.com. 2 p.m. Eastern Time is Tech and Web3 Legal Office Hours with Francesca Witzberg, Sean Tron, and Michael Morrow on Entra. And at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time is Web3 Weekly Digest on Entra with Mark Angelos. So check those events out. And that's all the news we have for today. Everybody have a great rest of your Tuesday, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.